But it's time to say goodbye to this tire and hello to this tire. So you can get a really good look at this tread that you, we're talking about. But what we're dealing with and what we're talking about today are the new Grizzly tires that Super 73 put out. <laughs> Right. What is going on my fellow Super 73ers? It's been a while since we've done a video, but I figured it's time we do another do-it-yourself video because I'm excited because I'm getting rid of the tires that came on this bike that have been, been nothing but a pain and a struggle. And a shout out to my Super Squad Florida group because on Instagram, you guys are always hearing me complain about my flat tires I keep getting on this bike here. I have had nothing but bad luck averaging about one flat per four to five rides. And I don't live in the woods. Uh, I live where most of the roads, you know, are, are two lane roads on both sides of the road. And there's just debris that falls off trucks. There's nails, there's screws, there's... I don't have some of the stuff around me right now that's gone into this tire, but you would be blown away. So I do run a Tuffy tire liner on this back tire, and every single flat tire I've received has been on the rear tire. And I do think it has to do with the uh, tread on these. I tend to get these flats when I'm actually going at full speed, so anywhere from that 25 to 31 miles per hour is when I tend to get the flats that I notice. And I also run slime in the back tire, and the slime has yet to help me once. So these punctures have not only made it past the tire liner, but they're also causing a failure in terms of the slime. I do know there's an Armor Dills product out there. I haven't tried that, but I don't think I'm gonna put any of that stuff back in my tube. I do have a brand new tube here that I am gonna be putting on because I've patched this tire a couple times. It's gone through the ringer. I think it's time we just start with a fresh, clean slate. But what we're dealing with and what we're talking about today are the new Grizzly tires that Super 73 put out. They're more of an all-terrain tire. You can just see the big knobs on these tires. Let's get precise. The knobs on these tires are a good, just under a half inch are some of the knobs on here. So we're, we're between a quarter and a half inch thick for the knobs on this. And I think that extra clearance is gonna help me get over some of this debris that I keep riding over. I'm sure that there's gonna be um, a loss of battery usage with these tires. I'll, I'll weigh the actual rubber tire so we can see what kind of a uh, pound difference we're talking about. I don't think that's gonna be as big of a deal as the actual rolling resistance on these tires. Obviously, when you have an all-terrain tire, I have a truck and I run all terrains on it and I tend to get about two miles per gallon less on it. So the rolling resistance is gonna be greater, which in turn is gonna cause more stress on the battery, which means I probably won't be able to go as long a distance. But most of my trips are shorter, so I'm not too worried about that. Uh, but at the end of the day, my biggest hope and my what I'm praying for is less flat tires. I believe I'm at six flats in a thousand miles, but I do want to get these new tires on and that's what we're gonna do right now. So let's dive in to getting these tires on. And as you guys just saw, we're gonna be working with very little tools, very little equipment. Really, you're just gonna need tire levers. You need your Allen wrench, which you should be able to get around uh, along uh, with one size Allen wrench for the brake calipers we're gonna be removing. Uh, and the real, uh, real wheel, rear wheel, um, and um, I forgot about that on the front tire. We will have to get a lug nut to handle that as well. But we're going to flip this bike upside down, and we're going to get started. So follow along, and if you got questions, comments, anything, post that down there. Hit the like button. Hit the subscribe. I got videos from biking, mountain biking, the Super 73 electric bike, do-it-yourself videos, and some crypto videos as well. So I hope you guys enjoy this and let's hop right in. So one thing I'm not showing you that I have already done is move my little mirror out of the way. Also, your speedometer, your little heads up display. I keep mine just untightened enough so that I can always spin it, move it around out of the way just a little bit. So that's just the way I operate. So let me walk you through what I'm gonna be doing here on the actual back tire. So on the back tire here, we got our battery power 
cable right here. This is what connects the electronics to the actual motor hub motor back here. We have our brake caliper here as well. What I'll do is I'm gonna be disconnecting this. I'm gonna spread these out. I'll cut this zip tie right here just to make it so I can move my cable around and it's out of the way. I will remove the uh, brake caliper next. I will secure that to the side post over here. I'm gonna come around. I will disconnect or I will undo the actual chain. We've gotta get the chain off. And I, on mine, I don't believe they send these out on the S2s anymore, but on my uh, Super 73 S2, I do have a chain tensioner over here. I always like to take a picture with my phone of just the way that looks so that when I'm putting it back together, it's a lot easier for me to reassemble. I can see exactly how it's supposed to go. So I'll be setting my chain to the side. And then we got two bolts on this side that we'll have to remove and two bolts that match this on the other side for us to be able to just slide this tire directly down and out. If we wanna head over here to the front tire and take a look at what we're gonna be working with right here. The main difference is we are gonna have to loosen up this lug nut here and the front tire is obviously a heck of a lot easier to do than the back tire. What I'm thinking is let's start with the front. Let's get this front one knocked out out of the way so we got at least one done because I'm sure the back one will give us a little bit of trouble. But we got these two lug nuts, one on each side. So let's get those loosened up and let's get this tire off. All right, so I'm going with a 15 millimeter socket here. I've got an attached just so I can use my large socket wrench here and go down a size. Lefty Lucy. And I've got my 15 millimeter. You could go 9 sixteenths. I wouldn't recommend 5 eighths. It's a little bit looser than you need to be. All right, so we'll set that aside. We're gonna remove the caliper first like we discussed. All right, so that's loose. That's loose. And for a lot of you, if you're gonna do this job, I recommend doing it in one sitting. I don't recommend you leave your bike upside down like this. Uh, you'll get some of the shock fluid out of your uh, front suspension. Uh, there's a chance that could always start to leak down your stanchions, which you don't want happening. It's not gonna destroy anything, but you wanna keep all the fluid you can in your front suspension. And I'm not sure if it's the same for the R series, but you do have to put your front caliper on a certain way when you reattach it. You can see here, there's this uh, spacer. This is a spacer used, which keeps your caliper further up the rotor so that it's not pushing up against it too much. You can't really put it on wrong when you're reassembling this. So like I said, like everything, you can always just take a picture uh, these calipers are pretty dirty right now, so I will be wiping these down before I reattach everything. You got a lot of washers on these as well. But you can see my little spacer just fell off. And this can pretty much just rest aside. The thing is you don't want to bend your actual hydraulic brake line cable here. So what I like to do, like I said, zip tie or something like this, as long as it's out of the way and your tire's not going to rub on it, I can bring mine up here and I can just do this. Boom. Just like that. Just holds it in place. These things are awesome. Here's my little spacer. Again, I'll get something so I can wipe all this down. I'm going to set it to the side right now. Now we can finish loosening these up. Your tire's not going to fall off if you completely remove these. And they are the same size so you can't put them on the wrong side. All right, so this will just pop right off, just like that. And something to take note of, something I wanna mention to you guys. When you're looking at these tires here, you can see on, your, on the rotors, there's a little arrow, and this arrow is pointing this direction. So what that is showing us is the direction that this spins when it's on the bike. And the bike's upside down right now, so obviously you can't tell, but that is the direction that it's spinning. And that's good to know because when we put our tire on, these rubber tires typically need to go on the rim in the correct direction. So we're gonna be able to use these arrows on our rotor to help us when we're putting our new rubber tire on. So let's get to it. All right, don't kill the messenger if I don't name parts right and things like that. But we are using a 10 millimeter wrench here. The reason for this wrench is on the stem valve here. This is what I'm talking about. I don't know if I know the parts correctly. You got a little nut, a stem nut. That's what we're gonna call it, a little stem nut that pushes up against the actual rim, holds this uh, valve in place so it's not moving around. The first two things we gotta do to get this uh, rubber tire off. 
We've already taken it off the bike. We need to take our valve cap off. We have to deflate this front tire. This is the tire that actually had air in it. So we need to deflate this tire all the way. And there's a couple ways you could do that. Um, you could actually just push down on it like this. You can hear it. Or you could actually remove that actual stem valve. It's a little bit more work. You gotta have the right kind of tool to do that. If you got a, a, a slime kit, for instance, that's gonna come out. Uh, but what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna let the air out of this. It's gonna go pretty quick. Most people are only gonna have somewhere between 20 and 30 PSI in their tire. So that'll come out pretty quick. Uh, now I'm actually just removing the stem nut that we talked about. These things are always a little bit of a pain in the butt. You wanna make sure you thread it correctly too, otherwise they can get stuck on there pretty good. You still gotta get it on there and get it off of that part. There we go. All right, all right, so I'll set these aside. You got your rotor on one side and you just have the one bolt threading on the other. Make sure you set it on this side here. I don't wanna have my rotor on the ground or being pushed against anything, so if I'm applying any kind of pressure, I don't wanna potentially risk bending my rotor. You can bend them back, but it's not good to add any kind of a bend to that. You're gonna notice if you haven't removed a tire recently, when you inflate these, they pretty much end up sealing themselves on the edge of your rim. Most likely you're gonna feel like there's some resistance there. All you gotta do is just put some pressure on here and it's gonna break free that seal. See, you heard that, nothing to be worried about. It was just popping the seal. And you can get it on the other side as well. There we go. I like to get this stem out of the way. First, let's start getting part of this tire off. We're gonna take our tire level lever here, stick it in there and pop it out. If you ever wondered what these hooks are for, it's so you can actually pop it right under a spoke. Look at that, I don't have to hold it anymore. Then when you take your other one, you can start it right next to it. Whomp, just like that. See, I mean the other one popped out, but it doesn't matter at this point. There we go. We're already loose. Now what we can do, we can look for our stem right there. You can feel there's the whole thing still inflated pretty good, but I can also pull the stem up and out. Now you can see my rubber tire. All right, so now we can just pull this whole tire off. Some people like to put their rubber tire in after they get the wheel on. I personally like to have my tube slightly inflated so that it's got its shape and then put it over it. As long as you got the shape, you shouldn't have to worry about pinching it or catching it. You can see here, we pull the tube out. I got my liner here. All right, so we're gonna just leave the tube the way it is. I'm gonna throw that to the side. We got our liner here. We'll put this to the side as well. This liner is still nice and clean. Everything's in good shape, but it's time to say goodbye to this tire and hello to this tire. So you can get a really good look at this tread that you we're talking about. You got about a quarter inch of depth on the tread for the stock one. Yes, I've put about a thousand miles on these, but overall they're still in relatively good shape. And you got about double the rise here with these knobs, but you can see the spacing on them and the difference. And something cool I saw from one of the Super 73 videos I watched from the actual uh, designer of these tires, uh, this little round part coming off from the edges here, these are called Grizzly tires. Well, those are supposed to kind of replicate that claw. I hope the design and the look that you've implemented into these tires add some functionality and it's not just for looks. But either way, I'm excited. Let's get this on. Ah, there's like hardly any difference whatsoever. I'm not even gonna spend time weighing it right this second. I'm sure we can pull that spec somewhere off the internet. So here's our arrow right here. You can see there is an arrow. I'm hoping you can see that on your screen and it's pointing this way. We talked about how our rotor has that arrow as well. This is the way our tire goes. So we need to make sure the arrow points the same way. So we'll be putting our tire on just like this. We gotta get our tire liner put in first. By the way, you have two liners that you can have on a tire. You got your rim liner and then your actual tire liner is going between the tube and the like top part of your rubber. These liners always need a little bit of adjustment after you get your tube put back in. So I'm gonna stick this back in. And this is a brand new tire, so it could use a little bit of stretching. But what I like to do is after, this is just if you're dealing with a liner, I like to go in, and that's again why I like to have this tube 
partially inflated like this, it helps hold your liner in place. But I like to just make sure I try and center up my liner as best as possible, you know? I mean, you just want it to be as centered and perfectly on the edges so that it serves its purpose. Rotor up. Gotta make sure I line up my stem valve in the proper position. I'm gonna stick that through there to start. Makes everything a little bit easier. Once you line that up, you just wanna keep that centered. You don't wanna have too much bending or play on that. And then I like to come in from the inside. There we go. I'm just pushing on the rubber through the inside, kinda of pushing it over the lip. I'm gonna just check that that's centered again still. I'm gonna make sure I get, there we go. Tubes in place in the right spot. And now it's time to lever it up. So this is always the fun part. So we're kind of reversing the lever now. So the part that angles down is gonna rest directly on the rim. Go like that. So we got this. I like to work one while I'm holding the other. So far so good. When you get to a spot where it gets a little tougher, that's when I recommend you just hold one there and then you just start from the other side. So you can see my stem valve here is starting to angle a little bit. I wanna fix that. Here we go, perfect. You're gonna hear some loud noise. I'm gonna turn on my air compressor. We got the air compressor right over here. But you can see here, you can see how off the beading is right here. That's why as you inflate these, it's always good to over inflate them. It'll make sure everything pops into place correctly. I also like to do a little bit of this as I'm inflating. We're running pretty heavy on the pressure right now. The actual tire says max of 36. You wanna over inflate these because everything's gonna be shifting around. It's gonna be seating itself on your rim here. Some people like to rub a little bit of dishwashing soap right around the edge to help. I don't mess with that as much. Everything looks to be pretty good. I will say here, it looks to be popping out a little bit. This is a spot to me that's slightly concerning right about here. You can see this edge should be inside of there and it's not. And I don't like that because, you know, last thing you want is something to go wrong with your tire while you're out there on the street going 30 miles per hour. So I'm gonna let some air out of this. See if we can't seat that spot a little bit better. But the pop happened. So sometimes when you're inflating these and it's actually a good thing, you're gonna hear it pop. And that pop usually means it's seating itself. So. I let the air back out. I, I brought it back down to like 10 PSI. I put my tire lever in there again, just to kind of stretch out a few of the spots. And then I reinflated it to where I wanted it to be. I should be up closer to where I ride this. Okay, so I'm at 30 right now. So that second inflation, I got it back up to 30. I heard the pop and now everything is seated perfectly around. We've got the correct air pressure in here. I, I will let some out. I'm gonna let it sit a little bit longer though with this higher uh, pressure. And we're gonna reattach it though right now. All right. All right, those have been hand tightened. All right, so I got a pretty cool tool here I'm gonna show you guys. Okay, so this little tool right here, this thing's pretty neat. I use these for my mountain biking. You know, I want my brakes to be perfect on my bikes. So I'm gonna show you guys something here. This is a disc brake gap regulator. So what it lets you do, the shape of it, it's shaped similar to the rotor, the roundness. So what this can do is sit right over top of your rotor. And then as soon as you put the actual brake caliper on, you can slide this and it'll go in between the pads. It's thin enough, this metal, so that your pads will sit up against this and it helps you position your caliper as you tighten it down so that you're not tightening it off kelter. Now that is a genius tool. All right, so we're gonna loosen this up. I'm gonna set this right here 
and I want to get something to wipe some of this down. Remember, never hit your uh, brakes while you got this disconnected. You'll have to pry the brake pads apart from each other. All right, so I'm gonna take my little regulator piece here. I'm gonna slide it right there. I'm gonna slide these right over it, just like that. Now I gotta get this piece here, my spacer, up. It even tells me, so there we go. There we go. Now it's positioned correctly. These bolts are actually two different sizes. Your bigger one should be uh, closer to the top of the bike, as that's where the thicker part of the spacer is. So I'm gonna just hand tighten that into place so I can let go of this. I'm gonna get my other one, same thing. And that regulator piece is still there. I'm gonna tighten down my bolts first, just to make sure my wheel is in place and, that, that's, and my rotor is not gonna shift around at all. All right, that's yeah, nice and snug. All right, so that is spinning freely, which I like to see. So I'm gonna tighten this one down. Now you can remove this piece here and everything should be good. So I do hear a slight metallic -y noise, which means there is a little bit of grinding going on, but I have to, tell you that has to do with I can tell the rotor is slightly wobbling all right let's roll this tire the direction it should go everything is good one tire down last thing valve cover onto the back tire okay so when I'm taking the chain off I like to just push down on the tensioner again you might not have that and then it lets you just kind of Pop it off just like that. Again, we're using the same Allen wrench. Nice thing is, is all these bolts down here are mostly the same size. We're loosening this piece up. We're taking this whole bolt off. And we're gonna set the chain over here on the side with the tensioner. Pull it off the tire there. And if you just wanna get it away, if you don't want it resting on your bike, again, you could use one of these like twister type things just to get it out of the way. But that was the first thing we wanted to do. We wanted to get that out of the way. Now we got, again, we gotta remove these bolts that are on both sides here. So we'll start loosening them. I do have some of the uh, blue thread locker, the Loctite 242. I'm only showing that to you guys because I do like to put that on these bolts before I uh, reapply them, especially since I take these off so much. <laughs> All right, now let's hop over to the other side. All right, so I don't want to completely loosen that where this is going to pop right out just yet because I do want to remove my brake caliper and your back brake caliper will not have a spacer on it. And you'll see here for the actual brake caliper screws, they use the uh, red thread locker. They don't use the blue, uh, but I do need to disconnect <laughs> the power cable here as we talked about because that does attach so we are gonna have to clip my zip tie that I used to hold this down but first let's just undo it all right, all right. you always got to be careful we're talking about this is your main cable so better know what you're doing Let's remove this tube so you can see how horrible this tube has, uh, what it's gone through. It's time to say goodbye to this tube. Just because it's brand new doesn't mean there's no leaks on it. So I always like to pump these up, make sure it stays like this while I'm doing the rest of the work. So we got this pumped up. We're gonna set this to the side. Focus on getting our liner put back in. All right, so we haven't gone over this yet, but the back tire is a five inch. The front is a four and a half. I actually had ordered two of the fives thinking I'd go with the five in the front. I ended up noticing how close that this front tire is to the edge of the front suspension. So I gave a quick call to Super 73. First time around, I left them a voicemail. Didn't want to wait. I had just put in the order. I didn't want anything to get screwed up. So I called back about an hour or two later and they picked up the phone. Woo! And they told me that that is incorrect. So they did cancel my order. 
they were able to email me an updated order that I could submit, which I was then able to place. And the uh, original order got shipped to me. And so did the new one. So, a uh, little buy one, get one deal. If you made it this far into the video and you're actually paying attention, that's some uh, something pretty cool that happened. And you know what? With all the other stuff I've gone through with Super 73, there's actually no part of me that felt like telling them that happened. That's on them. They're the ones that got to get their shit together. So I think we're good. Okay, I did the same thing as last time. I'm sure if you guys heard that just now, it was right before I said listen for it. You could hear it stretch out. And now this line is like a perfect quarter inch away from the rim all the way around. Let's check the pressure. What do I got in here right now? 40. So it took 40 to really get that to pop out. But again, I, I filled it up to about 35. I deflated it all the way back down and I reinflated it again. So to me, that's the best practice. If you got a hand pump, I, I, I feel for you. Get an air compressor. All right, now we got about 28. That's good enough for me. All right, so time for the uh, reassembly. When you're putting the back tire on, just have uh, two of the uh, bolts that you had to take the four of them off of. Keep two of them handy so you can uh, put them in once you finally get this perfectly in place so that it doesn't fall out. Oh. I forgot I actually had a little tube of thread locker still that I hadn't finished using, so I'm going to finish that one before I go and use that big kit. All you got to do is put like a drop or two on these things, nothing crazy. I like to do the chain next before I throw my calipers on. Really before I even secure all four of these bolts, I like to make sure the uh, chain can get back on correctly. Just to make sure there's no problems, you know, make sure I don't need to go get myself a new chain or anything crazy like that. Alright, so same thing I did on the front. I'm going to take this, I'm going to apply it where the caliper sits. I'm going to take my caliper, wedge it on there. All right, so there you have it. We've double checked everything. We've made sure everything's tight. That's really important. Make sure you got your lug nuts up here in the front holding your tire on nice and tight. Make sure your calipers are tightened. Make sure you check your brake levers. Anytime you start off on your bike, after you've done any kind of tire work, I always recommend don't take your bike over five, 10 miles an hour, maybe probably five to seven. Start out in like a pedal assist one. Just check everything, make sure your gears are working, make sure the electronics are still going, and then just go have some fun, rip it. So for my next video, check up here in one of these corners here. I'll throw the extra little card here that links you guys to the review of these tires. But I'm expecting only positives, but let's uh, start this uh, counter at zero here on September 21st. And uh, let's do a little uh, mileage test to see how far we make it before we get our next flat. So again, we're running tire liners in the front and the back. We have a four and a half inch Grizzly new front tire in the front on our S2 Super 73. We're running the five inch width on the back. We have tire liners on both the front and the back. We are not running slime. Stay tuned. I'll get you guys a review video, a little bit of ride footage, and I'll give you guys my first thoughts on these new tires. Thanks for watching.